Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to day number four of our Goblin Test Week. Uh, so, so far this week we've been making characters for each of the editions of Dungeons & Dragons from first all the way through to fifth edition. Uh, today's Thursday, so it's day four, so we're going to be making our first level fighter for D&D fourth edition. So this is actually going to be interesting because all these dice here, I don't need them for character creation at all. This is going to be uh, the first system that uses a prearranged set of stats as its default method. Uh, the rolling the 46 and dropping the lowest is, I think, the third method behind uh, point by, which is the second one, and the standard array, which is going to be the first uh, method that we're going to use. So. Let's just go right to it here. So, making characters, uh, generating ability scores. So, the standard array is 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10. So, I'm just going to write those down. So, we've got 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Okay. Alright, <clears throat> so we've got that. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go straight to our uh, human character, our human race, just to see what they get, because this is also the first edition where humans actually get a bonus to some of their ability scores. So, we know, let's have a look here. So ability scores, they get plus two to one ability score of your choice. So um, I've been kind of thinking about how I want to put that plus two if I wanted to make the 16 into a uh, into a uh, 18 or if I want to make the 14 into a 16 and have uh, two 16s for like strength and say constitution. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is probably, um, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to actually put that into the, uh, into the strength. So I'm going to make the 16 and 18, uh, even though our next, uh, our optimal character will have an 18. So I'll actually be able to make a 20, for example. Um, so let's just go ahead and make that an 18. So we're going to call that our strength. Uh, and we're going to make our uh, constitution the 14. Now when it comes to dexterity, in this version of the game, uh, again, I'm going to be looking to be wearing chainmail, if possible, along with a uh, shield and a longsword. So uh, the way that armor works in this one is there's just light and heavy. I don't think there's any, there's no medium armor. I don't think there's anything in between. So let's just zoom back out here for a second. I'm just going to skip right to the to the armor because that does shape um, how I assign some of these abilities. So with armor, yeah, so as you can see it's broken down by the different types of um, different types of armor but it's still only the two categories of light or heavy. So you've got uh, cloth armor, leather, hide, chain mail, uh, scale plate, and then finally down here we have shields. So with that in mind, uh, with the light armors, you can add your dexterity bonus to your armor class, but with heavy armors, you cannot. So that's essentially the way that uh, that works. Um, so it says when you wear heavy armor, you don't add an ability score modifier to your armor class. Um, Actually, sorry, with light armor, you can uh, you can apply your intelligence or dexterity modifier to your armor class, whichever is whichever's better. So, you know, you're either smart enough to know how to, uh, to stay away from attacks or you're dexterous enough to dodge them as they come to you. Uh, but with uh, the heavy armor, you're not wearing anything. So the only benefit to having a positive modifier in dexterity would be for my uh, reflex uh, defense, because in 4th edition, instead of having the Fortitude Reflex and Will saving throws, uh, what they've done is they've actually made them a defense. Now, I actually like that personally quite a bit. The main reason that I like that is it gets rid of the extra dice rolling, which was sort of one, one of the things that 4th edition wanted to do was kind of streamline some of these things. So instead of having to roll a saving throw, 
um, the enemies would attack a specific defense. So like a fireball, for example, instead of the character making a saving throw, uh, the attacker just rolls against uh, reflex defenses, and they either hit or miss, and, and same with will, and fortitude, and so on. So they all work sort of on the same uh, mechanics. Uh, so reflex saving throw or defense is still kind of important. Um, I've got two ability scores that give me a plus one modifier. With the uh, 13 and the 12, so let's go ahead and we'll still put the dexterity as 13. We'll put our wisdom as 12 and then our intelligence and charisma will be 11 and 10. So we'll plop those into our uh, sheet here. Now, uh, the printer was getting kind of low in ink. I replaced the black ink, but interestingly enough, it's still making the gray colors. Anything that was supposed to be initially gray is coming up as uh, red and yellow. I don't know if it's just doing that to try to dump the color cartridge now, so I have to replace that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so what we've got here, so our strength score is going to be 18. Our constitution score is going to be 14. Dexterity is 13. Intelligence is 11. Wisdom is 12. Charisma is 10. All right. The ability score modifiers are the same as 3rd uh, edition D&D. So the, uh, the 10 would be an average, so it gives you 0 for a modifier. Uh, same for 11, but uh, 12, uh, 12, 14, 16, and 18 would give us plus 1, 2, 3, and 4 respectively. So uh, our 12 and 13 will give us plus 1. Our 14 constitution will give us plus 2. And our 18 strength will give us plus 4. Four. Now we can also add half of our uh, level to uh, certain things like attack rolls, um, certain types of checks. There's a lot of things that you add. You basically add half your level to just about everything. This replaces stuff like base attack and things along those lines. <coughs> but uh, we're at first level, so that is rounded down, so uh, we don't actually get to uh, add anything yet for that. Uh, so our character, of course we're going to go with... Ethan and Jasan. I figure we'll all make them the same same name, with the exception of, uh, of course, the legendary Tar Markvar, which I made the other day. Uh, race is going to be human. Size is medium. Going to make him 23 for this. Uh, he's a male. He's five foot ten inches. One sixty five. Alignment is lawful good. Uh, deity, uh, whoop. so we're not going to worry too much about uh, the deity, he's not really a religious individual, uh, don't have to worry about any of that other stuff. Alright, so let's go now and look at some basic information. Uh, so for the human race, there's a few things that uh, we do get that, let's zoom back out here, so I'm just going to write down what humans get. So I don't have to keep referencing back. Alright, so humans get, uh, languages I'm not too worried about, they get a bonus at will power from their class. So normally you only get to choose two at will attacks. Uh, the human however gets to add a third one. Uh, they did change the human in D&D Essentials. And I'm contemplating making an Essentials character sort of like maybe just a bonus video to see how they do. And just because the human with that, uh, what they do is they get an uh, ability they can use once per encounter. That if they fail a saving throw, they can use that ability to get an extra plus four uh, to that saving throw. And, um, or saving throw or if an attack hits them. Or I think they can increase their defenses or our bonus on attack or uh, uh, saving throw. But they, they get to add basically plus four to try to prevent something from happening which they can do once per encounter, but in this case we get the bonus at will power, uh, we get an extra feat, uh, training and a bonus skill, and plus one to fortitude, reflex, and will defenses. So uh, that I can just write in, oh, let's worry about that here in a second. So we get one feat, uh, one extra skill, 
and we get <coughs> um, what else did I say that we had there? One at will, extra at will, and plus one to a fort, reflex, and will. Okay. So that is our human. So now we got to look at our class. So the fighter. Let's zoom back in here again. All right, so the fighter is proficient with cloth, leather, uh, hide, chainmail, which is the one that we're concerned about, scale, uh, light shield, and a heavy shield. Uh, they are proficient with simple uh, melee military uh, weapons uh, for both melee and range. And they get plus two to uh, fortitude. So we got that down. Uh, so our hit points at first level are 15 plus our constitution score. So 15 plus con. So the way the reason that they did that, um, they made it so that your instead of with this version, they took out a lot of the randomness uh, from the game. So your hit points, uh, they gave you extra hit points at at lower levels. So instead of having um, like a d10 for hit dice plus your constitution modifier, uh, you get 15 hit points plus your constitution score. Uh, which you add, uh, but every time you level after that, you gain six hit points. So you gain a fixed amount of hit points uh, throughout your level progression. Uh, the reason that they did that was to make the lower levels something that would actually be uh, survivable and something that they wanted to make the lower levels actually feel fun and make players want to play first level characters. And that was such a huge issue with like 3rd third, third edition in particular. Uh, most of our groups that would start at a minimum of third level. And you see third level kind of um, play an important role in like fifth edition, the way that they designed uh, the lower levels with that. Um, so it, it was, it, you know, some people didn't like the, the change that they made, but I kind of liked it just because, again, it actually made first level characters fun to play. And it gave your first level characters things you could do um, beyond just like having one ability that once it's used, you're kind of useless. Now the fighters never had to worry about that, but things like the uh, the wizard, for example, always have like at will abilities, which that may sound familiar, because uh, in fifth edition they always have their cantrips that they can do, and they made the cantrips you know decent, and that was a uh, holdover from from fourth edition. So anyway, before I get too much further off track, um, so you have 15 plus my constitution score for starting hit points. Uh, now monsters also have higher hit points as well. So while that sounds like a lot. Uh, the average goblin is going to have a lot more than, like, you know, seven hit points uh, that they have in other editions. Uh, healing surges, uh, we get nine plus our constitution modifier. Uh, so surges, nine plus con mod. Now, I don't think uh, we're going to get to use too many of these. We do have um, a second wind, so every character in fourth edition has this, a second wind ability that allows them to spend a healing surge in combat and until the end of their turn I think they get plus one to all of their uh, defenses as well uh, so I will be able to use at least one in um, in combat uh, so train skills uh, okay so I'm just gonna s just write these down now so for train skills I get to choose uh, two or three from three skills at uh, first level. So the class skills I have are athletics, endurance, uh, heal, intimidate, and streetwise. I think I'm just going to take those. Uh, I think I'm going to take athletics, uh, endurance, and intimidate. So what I'm going to do is actually come back down here and just look at our at our skills here, so athletics. Uh, so what we got here is you got your your charts that go across. I, I know I'm a lefty, so I block a lot of the stuff out. So we got athletics here. We use strength, and, and we would add half our level. So uh, right now it's just plus four, so it's ability modifier plus half our level. So that is plus four. 
And if we're trained in a skill, you get a plus five bonus. Now the modern equivalent in fifth edition is adding your proficiency bonus, which changes as you go through levels. Uh, but this one, you just get a flat uh, plus five. And some uh, races will give you bonuses to skills, like um, elves get a bonus on perception, for example. And I think halflings get a bonus on stealth or something like that. It's been a while since I looked at uh, the other races. <coughs> so uh, for athletics, we get plus nine total. Uh, the other two that we took were endurance, so the same thing. Our constitution modifier is plus two. We get plus five for being trained, so we get plus seven. Uh, actually, maybe I'll hold off on putting that in, uh, and maybe I'll hold off on the athletics just because um, your armor, heavy armor, will affect those, and we'll, we'll provide modifiers. So let's just not fill those ones in yet. And I think intimidate was the last one that I wanted to take. So intimidate, charisma zero, plus five. So I get plus five in intimidate. Um, so, Arcana Intelligence is just going to be plus zero. Uh, Bluff Charisma is going to be zero. Diplomacy is going to be zero. Uh, Dungeoneering is going to be Wisdom, which is plus one. And if you're wondering where I'm getting those numbers, it's just from our uh, Ability Score modifiers. Uh, Heal is Wisdom, which is going to be plus one. History is going to be Intelligence, which gives us a zero. Insight is Wisdom, which is plus one. Nature is wisdom, which is plus one. Perception is wisdom, which is plus one. Uh, religion is intelligence, which is zero. Stealth is dexterity, which is plus one, but it may have a modifier for wearing the chain armor, which it most likely will. Uh, streetwise is charisma, which is zero. And thievery is dexterity, uh, which is plus one, but again, that's probably going to be modified as well. So heal doesn't have... Uh, an armor penalty. So I'm just going to fill those ones in uh, right now. Uh, so history is going to be zero. Uh, Insight is going to be plus one. Nature is going to be plus one. Perception is going to be plus one. Religion is zero. Stealth can be affected. Streetwise is going to be zero. Okay. Uh, whoops, plus one there. Uh, zero, zero. Okay. So we got our skills sort of filled in there. Uh, so let's get our uh, maximum hit points here. So our maximum hit points is 15 plus our constitution score, which is 14. So that is going to give us a total number of hit points of 29. All right, so half. Uh, once we reach half of our hit points or we get reach our uh, halfway point or below, we become what's referred to as bloodied. Uh, bloodied doesn't do a lot for the fighter necessarily, but some monsters and some characters have abilities that uh, have higher effect or they trigger when something becomes bloodied. Now it's half of our hit point value uh, rounded down because everything gets uh, gets rounded down. So uh, we would be bloodied at 14 when we have 14 hit points or less. And our healing surges is uh, like our value is how much we heal when. <coughs> we use a surge. Um, so it would be uh, one-fourth of our starting hit points. So I'm just going to put that down as basically half the bloodied value. So we get seven hit points back whenever we spend a healing surge. And we have nine plus our constitution modifier. So we have 12 surges per day. Now that sounds like a lot, but remember if you are if you were down to, you know, single digit hit points or if you were knocked unconscious, you would have to spend four to get uh, pretty much up to full. And certain things can also cause you to lose healing surges. So certain traps, um, instead of dealing direct damage to you, uh, would take away one of your healing surges, which represents uh, kind of like sustaining an injury and uh, having difficulty uh, recovering as a result. So uh, exhaustion can also cause you to lose uh, healing surges. So it's it's something that kind of represents your body's um, taking taking injuries and inability to heal as a result of those injuries and um, exhaustion, things along those lines. So we've got that. All right, um, I think all that's left to do here uh, are race features. So let's go come over here. And let's just fill in the rest of our numbers that we can do right now, which is our defenses. So um, 
we start off, so each of these have a base of 10 plus half the level. So right now it's just going to be 10, 10, 10, and 10 uh, for Fortitude. So I can't do the armor class yet because I actually have to buy the, uh, the armor and stuff. So our defense um, for our Fortitude, we can use, um, and this is what's interesting about this, if you look at the ability scores here, you see these colored you know, lines that I had shown earlier and how they kind of both um, have this thing that kind of points to the, the number there. The way that that works is you can actually put um, the better of the two uh, numbers that are leading into the circle here. So, for example, for my Fortitude defense, I can put uh, either Strength or Constitution, whichever is higher. Uh, so I'm going to put in my Strength, obviously, so it's going to be plus 4. I get plus 2 from my class. And I get a miscellaneous of plus one for being human, and that's in all three of those. So, uh, our fortitude defense, we can work that out right now, is 10, 14, 16, so we have a 17 fortitude. Our uh, reflex, we're going to use our dexterity modifier, plus one, and that'll give us a reflex defense of 12. And our will is also going to be plus one for the wisdom and that is also going to give us a 12. So we got 17 of 12 and 12. So we're good at overcoming <coughs> things that attack uh, or weaken the body, like poisons and things like that. Not as good at getting out of the way of things and we're not as good at uh, preventing like mental intrusions. Um, now, another thing, so we got our speed. Now, uh, so the way that speed works is your race dictates that, and instead of having it in like increments of feet, 4th uh, edition was designed to be done on a grid, so it gives you the number of squares. So what I can do as a human, I have a base movement of 6, and that's going to be modified uh, by the armor, so I'm not going to do anything else there for now. Then we've got our passive insight and passive perception. So there, it, passive perception is something that 5th edition does as well. Uh, so it's 10 plus your skill bonus in insight and perception, which I think for both of those is only plus one right now. So we have a passive insight and a passive perception of 11 each. All right, uh, next we have our attack workspace. So uh, we've got half our level, which is zero right now. Our ability, uh, so we're looking at essentially uh, melee and ranged. Um, so ability, so we're just going to go with uh, strength and dex. All right, so our ability is plus four. And uh, let's just have a look here. Uh, proficiency bonus. Uh, can't add that in yet because we'll find that when we get our weapons. So let's just do this for now. Uh, and our dexterity is only plus one. So we'll get to that in a moment. And damage. Uh, damage right now for strength is going to be plus four. And uh, for dexterity, it's going to be plus one. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff filled in. All that's left to do now is to choose our um, equipment, choose our feats, and our powers and abilities. Uh, so let's actually start off with um, let's actually start off with the feats just because that can impact some of our um, attacks and things of that nature. So let's go zoom back out here. Alright, so as a, as a first level character, all first level characters gain a single feat, and as a human I gain an extra feat. So I've got two feats that I can use here. Uh, we are first level, so we are stuck to the heroic tier of feats and I was looking through them and the ones that I think I want to choose are going to be uh, weapon focus which we see here 
And what Weapon Focus does is it gives you plus one damage with a chosen weapon type. And I'll show you what the weapon types are when we, when we kind of get there. Uh, there are things like pole arms, um, uh, or heavy blades, light blades, things like that. Uh, I'm going to be choosing heavy blades because that's what a longsword is, but it applies to anything in that category. So, like a longsword or a greatsword, or uh, I don't think they really do broadswords anymore. But uh, anything along those lines, I can actually get plus one damage on. So that's why I didn't want to fill in too much yet. And my second feat is going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go for uh, power attack. So I have the strength 15. I was looking at uh, a feat called potent challenge, but my constitution is one point too low, so I can't actually use that yet. Uh, but with power attack, I can get a minus two uh, on the attack roll for plus two on the damage roll. So those are the feats that I'm going to take. So let's just write them down here. So power attack. Minus two hit. Plus two damage. And then weapon focus. Uh, heavy blades. Wow. I do know how to spell it, just sometimes get ahead of myself. Uh, Alright, so <coughs> we've got that down now. Um, so, weapon. Alright, so I just want to write some things down here. So, for weapon repair, I'm just going to have. Uh, Longsword, basic, okay. And so we've got that out of the way. Uh, next I want to get my equipment and then I'm finally going to choose uh, the powers. Now, you can do that in, in a different order. I just want all the things that can affect uh, my abilities to be chosen and out of the way before I start like choosing like the attacks and the abilities, stuff like that. Uh, now, so for creating first level characters, all first level characters get 100 gold pieces that they can spend on armor, weapons, adventuring gear, and things of that nature. So it's a standard set amount that everyone gets now. So it's not one of those things where you have to um, roll randomly. So everybody gets the same, makes that a little bit easier. So I've got 100 gold. All right, so again, for armors, I want to I want to get chainmail if possible, just because I'm trying to keep it as consistent <coughs> with the equipment as I can throughout all the additions. So we're gonna go with uh, chainmail, which has a gold piece cost of 40. I could get scale armor, which will give me uh, an extra armor class bonus, and it's only five gold pieces more. And I may do that for my optimized character. But for this one, I'm going to do Chainmail. So Optimize is going to be getting the best equipment possible. Um, whereas the standard ones, I want to try to keep things as uh, close together as possible for the equipment. Now, I also want to get a Heavy Shield, which gives me plus two bonus to the armor class. And that costs 10 gold. So Shield. And so that's minus 40, minus 10. So I have 50 gold left, which will put me in a pretty good place to buy my longsword. But I do have to look at um, things like my uh, checks. So uh, armor, heavy armor, and shields and stuff can affect some of your skills, such as like your stealth, your athletics, your acrobatics, things along those lines. So our chainmail gives us a check penalty of minus one and a speed penalty of minus one. So what I have to do now is I'm just going to put the speed one in first because that's the only one that's going to be affected. So. Uh, so speed is minus one. I don't get any of the bonuses, so I have a speed of five. So I can move five squares or 25 feet if you're looking at you know each square being five feet uh, in combat now because of the uh, strength that I have, or because of the armor that I have. And for the checks though, the heavy shield also applies a minus two. So I'm getting negative three on all of my skills 
that have the armor penalty uh, listed there. So, minus three. Athletics, minus three. Endurance, minus three. And then stealth, minus three. And thievery, minus three. <clears throat> so that's, that's going to hurt quite a bit. Um, so for acrobatics, I get a negative two penalty. So that's not great. Uh, athletics, so I get plus nine, but minus three, so I get plus six on athletics. Uh, endurance is seven minus three, so I get plus four. Uh, to do stealth is going to be, uh, stealth and thievery are also both going to be at negative two. So if I had to make a stealth check right now, uh, that's actually a pretty good roll, but that's still only a 17. Um, so there, like if I rolled the 12, I'd only get 10. So it, it, it definitely, definitely makes, uh, makes an impact there. Uh, but I've got my armor and everything now, so let's go back to those. So shield gives me a plus two bonus. And my chainmail gives me plus six bonus. So going back up to our armor class defense here. Zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so armor is plus six. I don't have any for class or feats or anything like that, but under, now this one doesn't have a spot for shield, so I'm just gonna put it under one of the, um, well actually I guess it's uh, for the armor. No, I'm gonna keep the shield separate, even though I could just add them both together and put plus eight there. I'm gonna put one of the, sh the shield under miscellaneous, just in case something were to happen that caused me to lose the shield. Uh, so that is a total armor class of 18. All right, now let's go back to our class. So we got everything we, oh, we need to get our weapon. Hold on. We're not quite done yet. All right, so weapons, so they have them under simple or military. Uh, so we got the long sword here, which costs uh, 15 gold and weighs 4 pounds. So hey, that's something that's stayed the same throughout all of uh, Dungeons & Dragons, it looks like. Oops. Alright, and longsword. So, minus 15. Okay, so we've got uh, 65, so we have 35 gold left over. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about that because I don't need anything else. But let's look at our, our longsword here. Uh, because what we have is, so where we don't have um, base attack in 4th edition, uh, what they did is they gave weapons proficiency bonuses. So instead of trying to apply penalties uh, for not being proficient with things, they provided you bonuses for being proficient with things. It was just a way to keep the math, uh, extra math down as low as possible. So our proficiency bonuses we would add to our weapon attacks uh, and our longsword gives us a proficiency bonus of plus three. So whenever we make an attack with that uh, we add uh, three to it. Now the longsword is also versatile and so what versatile means is that um, you could wield it as a two-handed weapon as well and if you do that you add uh, one extra point of damage when you roll damage for the weapon and small creatures like halflings can't use uh, versatile weapons um, or they have to use them I think two-handed or something like that but they don't gain the bonus uh, damage for it so uh, our longsword is just plus three and it does a d8 so under our workspace here. Uh, so our longsword. I'm just going to put down. And I'm not going to be doing anything else, so I don't have any other weapons here. But it's going to give us a proficiency bonus of plus three. Now as a fighter, oh, and actually in our, sorry, our damage workspace, um, since longsword is a heavy blade, Oh, and I guess I should show actually. So there's the groups there. So I'm down like under like falchion and stuff. I'm under the uh, the two handed weapons. But there you see like the groups: heavy blade, heavy blade, polearm, axe, flail, polearm, spear, hammer. So those are the uh, the different uh, weapon groups. So for our heavy blade, we get plus one bonus to the damage, which we got right there. Okay. So now the last thing to do is just to choose our. Uh, powers and abilities because we got everything else and then we can just finalize our character. So let's go to the fighter and 
and I've already got the, the powers chosen that I want to use. Now, as a human, I get a third one. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to bother with cleave because uh, you see that up top there. That allows you to deal extra damage to a secondary target that's adjacent. We don't have that. Uh, so what I'm actually going to go for is Reaping Strike, uh, which if I it, it's basically a normal attack, but if I miss, I still add half of my strength modifier. Uh, I still do sorry, I still deal half of my strength modifier as damage to the target. If I was ha holding a two-handed weapon, then I could deal my full strength modifier. But I'm still okay with using that, and even on a miss, I'm still getting some damage in. So down on our character sheet here. Uh, do, do, do. I think we have a spot for... Yeah, so we've got our at-will power, so that was called Reaping Strike. And I'm just going to say on miss, deal half strength mod damage. All right. Uh, the next one I want to choose is going to be Shore Strike, and what that does is I only deal my normal weapon damage, so I'd only roll a d8 damage if I hit, but it gives me a plus two bonus to the attack roll, so it can make the attack roll even higher. Uh, if I'm having trouble hitting, that's one that I can go to. So I've got Shore Strike, so which is plus two attack, only weapon damage. Now that's just some shorthand notes just so I know what it does. And then the third one is gonna have to be, because I think those those are the only ones that we have. Yeah, so Tide of Iron will be the next one. And again, I don't really see me using this too much, but basically um, I have to be using a shield, which I am. Uh, so if I hit, I deal my uh, normal damage, which is the D8 plus my strength modifier, and I can push the target one square. Uh, if it's my size or smaller than me, or I'm one size uh, or one size category larger, I can shift into the space that it occupied. Uh, I'm not really going to do that, but I'm just going to write down uh, Tide of Iron. Push one square. Enter your previous square. S M L. So small, medium, or large. Okay. So there we go. So we've got all that. Uh, some other features that we get here. I guess I should actually uh, write that or write these down. So I've got combat challenge. Uh, I'm not going to need to use that or worry about that uh, too much. Um, although actually, uh, if they shift. So I think goblins can shift. So let's just write down our uh, combat challenge. And the way combat challenge works is, once I make an attack, whether it hits or misses, I mark the target that I attacked. And um, if that target attacks anything else, um, or it shifts, so in this case I'm only going to worry about the shift. Uh, but if it shifts, I can make a basic melee attack uh, as, a, as an interrupt. So it would take place before they get to do anything. And uh, so we'll just write that down. So combat challenge, if... Alright, target shifts. Make basic melee attack <coughs> is interrupt. Okay, so we got that. Uh, we also get <coughs> uh, so combat superiority. Uh, you gain a bonus to opportunity attacks equal to your wisdom modifier. Um, so that's not an opportunity. Whoops, let's scroll up here a bit. Uh, so this isn't an opportunity attack. It's just a uh, an interrupt basic melee attack. But if um, if I deal in, or if I make an attack of opportunity, I get to add my wisdom modifier, which is plus one. Uh, an enemy struck by your opportunity attack stops moving if a move provoked the attack. Uh, if it still has actions remaining, it can use them to resume moving. So, uh, I'm not too worried about that because I don't think I'm going to be making opportunity attacks. Um, but my fighter weapon talent, I choose one-handed or two-handed, 
weapons, and when using a weapon of the chosen style, I gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls. Uh, so, down here, and that was under weapon talent, so I'm just going to put weapon talent, one-handed. So that's going to give me a plus one to my attack rolls with all one-hand weapons, so that's something to keep in mind as well, which will really help when it comes to um, the uh, power attack, uh, for example. Alright, and up next we have one encounter ability to choose and one daily ability to use. Um, so, let's just have a look here. So, covering attack is, so it's one creature, strength versus armor class. If I hit, I deal two weapon damage, so I'd roll 2d8 plus my strength modifier. And in, a, in an ally adjacent to the target, shift two squares. I'm not too worried about that. Um, passing attack. Uh, again, not too worried about that because that's about attacking multiple things. Uh, spinning sweep. This is the one I'm probably going to go with. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with spinning sweep. I could go with steel serpent strike because that would uh, prevent the my opponent from shifting. But I actually kind of want them to shift because I get a free attack against them. So I'm going to go with Spinning Sweep, which is um, Strength versus Armor class. It uh, uh, does regular damage and I knock the target prone. So let's go with on our encounter powers. So encounter powers, Spinning Sweep. which just knocks prone, because everything else is the same and normal. And the last thing we have is our daily ability. Um, so, uh, the daily abilities I can only use, again, once per day. So both, actually, in this case, the encounter power and the daily power are both going to be a one use only. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to find a, uh, a daily power that has the reliable uh, keyword here. So under daily, martial, reliable weapon. And what reliable means is that if I miss the attack, I don't waste the ability. So I can try it again later. Uh, some daily abilities let you do something if you miss. So you're not completely like here. Um, if I miss, I gain plus one power bonus to attack rolls and damage rolls against the target until the end of the next, or until the end of the encounter. But um, I want something that I can basically ensure that I'm going to be able to get off. So there's Brute Strike, which does um, three, three weapon dice, so 3d8 <coughs> plus strength modifier. But I think what I'm going to go for is probably going to be the Comeback Strike, which is two weapons plus strength modifier, but I can spend a Healing Surge. Uh, and it's reliable as well. So I think that's what I'm going to use. So it's going to be, what was that, Comeback Strike under Daily. Comeback Strike, uh, which is 2d8 plus uh, and spend one healing surge, so it just gives me a few hit points uh, back that I can use as well, and I'm guaranteed to hopefully get that off because I'm not going to waste it if I don't hit. So we've got all of our stuff out here now. The all that's left to do is to fill in uh, is to fill in just the the very final uh, few things. So I don't have to worry about race features because I don't have that. Languages. Let's just put common and elven. Uh, no, sorry, Common and Goblin. Yeah, that works. Um, and I think I get more languages than that, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, all right, so with our attacks, uh, so our class, uh, since I'm using the longsword, it's going to give me plus one. And the, yes, yeah, so that should be, that should be it. So with my longsword attacks, I'm getting a total of plus seven. 
So plus 7. So I've got plus 7 versus AC. These are all going to be versus armor class. Um, and all the other ones are, are going to use that longsword as the base. The only difference is going to be I'm just going to put careful attack. Or no, not careful attack. Sure strike, I think was the name of it. Yeah, sure strike. <clears throat> careful attack is an ability from um, uh, one of the D&D board games. So sure strike is going to be plus 9 versus AC. Damage is just going to be 1d8. Longsword is 1d8 plus, and I'm adding, uh, so plus 5 all together. Uh, why don't I put in, let's have a look here. Uh, Tottenham I'm not too worried about. Uh, Reaping Strike <coughs> just deals um, half damage on a miss, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, but let's put Comeback Strike. So that is plus 7 versus armor class, and it does 2d8 plus 5. Okay, perfect. So there we go. <clears throat> we have, I think everything worked out. Um, oh, action points. That is important. I think everyone starts with one action point, which you can spend to take another action. So it could be like uh, an attack action, move action. Uh, things of that nature. Let's see if I can just find action point right quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Combat. I think it's under combat. Action points is on page 286. Which is way back here. Oh, okay, we also have it here as well, so uh, your character starts with one action point, no more than one once per encounter, you can spend an action point to take an extra action and let me know what I can do, uh, use certain feats or use Paragon Path Powers, which I don't get until 11th level, so that's not going to be happening, but uh, let's go to 286, because yeah, I don't want to forget that, I did mess up a couple things with the second edition character that I've gone back and corrected, but I want to thank everybody who's pointed that out. Uh, so action points, so you start with one action point, gain one action point, and reach your milestone, okay, spend an action point, so gain an extra action. Yeah, okay, so it just lets me uh, like make an extra attack or stuff. So I do have one action point, I'll make a note of that, and but that is it. <clears throat> so this one, this one was definitely a longer video. There's just more things to kind of go through. Uh, but that was our fourth edition character is made now and ready to go. Um, it's been a while since I've actually it's been a while since I've made any of these characters. Uh, so I think I probably could have done this in a more streamlined manner. But I, you know, just wanted to do certain things in a certain order just so I wasn't constantly going back and changing math or uh, erasing stuff. And anyway. Uh, so, we got that done. Our 4th edition character is ready to go. Uh, like I said, I'll also make an optimized character, which will have the 16, or sorry, the 18, 16, 12, and then the, the rest will be 8s. And uh, I'm also thinking I might make a D&D Essentials character as well, as just sort of a bonus video. I haven't fully decided on that one yet, uh, but we'll see, uh, just because the fighter in that is different. Uh, so it might be worth uh, doing that as well, just as sort of an extra. Anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about uh, character creation for this version of the game, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. I like to answer as many questions as I can. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and come back tomorrow, because we're going to be doing our 5th edition D&D character. And just because... I don't know when I'm going to get another chance to do that. I'm actually also going to be doing the 5th edition character using all the background uh, tables from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So come back for that. I uh, can't wait to do that one. Thank you guys again. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.